Hey y'all, this is Amanda and welcome back to my Texas Donate A Garden. And today we're going to be working in the front garden. We're going to be working with this particular pot that I got on Facebook Marketplace and we're going to be filling it with a mix of blooms that should last me through the spring and into most of the summer. Okay, so if you didn't catch my Facebook Marketplace find where I got several of these pots, I'll post that video below. It's really, really fun. One of the um, containers I got was this terracotta pot. Um, let me bring you all closer so you can see it a little better. Okay, so this is a good size um, container. I would say it's at least maybe 10 gallons. I'm not sure. Um, anyway, it has a hole at the base. I plunked it in here before all my maiden hair ferns started coming up over here and the main hair ferns came in up around it which is really fun and I love that. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be filling this with a combination of annuals and perennials and I'm going to be adding my drip lines to it and then this guy should be good for quite a while. So let's talk about the plates we're going to be adding in. Okay, so we're gonna add a mix of perennials and annuals. This space gets a lot of sun throughout the day. It gets a little bit of shade, um, but it'll, I think these all will do fine. It is mostly sun that it gets. So the central kind of thriller design that we're gonna have in here is a Henry Dolberg um, uh, salvia. And several of y'all suggested that I add this to my collection. And the reason I chose it is it's tall, kind of whimsical um, look and these kind of tall tall purple spires I think are absolutely beautiful. I think it has aphids already. How is that even possible? Okay, real quick, I'm going to cut off the few aphids I see real quick and throw them away. I would just prefer to do that before I even mess with this plant, even planting it. You know, I was talking to some of my friend gardeners and they had talked about how they had already seen aphids in their garden and I was like that's insane I feel like it's so early for dealing with that kind of stuff right now so what I'm doing is I'm actually just cutting off the pieces that I see that have aphids on them it's going to set me back a little bit on the blooms but that's fine And then once I get this whole design set up in the container, I'll treat it um, for aphids just to make sure that I'm on top of it. I'm going to just show you a close up of what I'm seeing. So that's the kind of aphids I'm seeing. I see these. Okay, moving forward. <laughs> aphids don't freak me out too much. They don't, they only go after a few things in my garden, so they don't stress me out too much. It's just weird to see them so early this season. And like I said, I've just been talking to some other gardeners about how they had seen aphids in their gardens already. And I was like, that's weird. It seems early. Here you go. So anyway, we're going to have the Henry Dilberg salvia as the main um, thriller in the design. We're also going to accompany it by the salvia greggy, which is called Mirage Rose Bicolor. It has these beautiful bicolor blooms that are kind of peachy and pink. This is also a um, perennial. And then we're going to accent it with a couple of different things. I bought this one container uh, that's supposed to have three different varieties of plants in it. I've only seen two of the varieties. Um, I forget the um, varieties at this exact moment. Oh, here it is. Um, the combination is called Night in Pompeii. And it has a um, Night in Pompeii, or excuse me, it has a Saguna Purple Impatience, which I do not see in here. It has a Techno Cobalt, uh, and I believe that's the Petunia, could be wrong. 
and then it has a lanai bright eye which i believe is this verbena over here and i bought this combination container at homegrown and i'm going to take it apart and use the plants within it i found that this was a more cost effective option than buying each of the individual plants this was 13.95 for three different plants but there's more than three plants in here so we'll be um working with that and then the last plant i'm putting in here it's a little bit different and new for me it's called an apitenia and it's a variegated apitenia and it's kind of the idea it doesn't need a lot of water it's kind of like a succulent um, but it kind of um, trails off in the planter and it does have some bright red color uh, red leaves i believe or red uh, blooms reddish pink blooms and i'll put up a picture of what those kind of look like but we're also going to have this trailing out the side of the container now i'm going to start with just a basic um, potting soil i've been utilizing one called vita earth that i get from homegrown as well i'm also going to add in a um, slow release uh, fertilizer and then let's get all of this started in there Okay, I'm actually going to start with this soil called Staw Green Potting Soil, and I don't really like it. It feels like mostly bark, but I'm going to put uh, and fill the container with about half of this. I think this will be good for drainage. And then I'm going to top it off with the Vita Earth Potting Soil. And I'm probably going to need a little bit more of the soil. Now, this is definitely going to be a tight fit on the container. But y'all know how I love myself um, a nice full container. Oh, I just put this in, but let me go grab my plant tone so I've got that in here too. So we've got the Henry Dulberg Salvia in first. Next, let's put the Salvia Greggy in. At least now it's root ball up a little bit. And I'm gonna have it angled a little bit so it's kind of spilling. Ah, that looks good. Okay, I want to be careful over here because I actually have some peonies coming up. So I want to make sure I don't break those. Truthfully, I'd rather damage the um, I'd rather damage the maiden hair fern because that stuff bounces back like crazy. Okay, so here's our mixed container. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open it up and I'm going to start searching for the plants. So I do see. Right here, I see the uh, verbena. So I'm just going to start very carefully kind of pulling some of these apart. Wow, these root balls are really worked into each other. So I'm going to stop what I'm doing because I don't think it's going to work to spread them out. So what I'm going to do is dig a hole. I'm going to aim the verbena to the side over here and the petunia to the center. Get these nestled in. So I'll have the verbena coming off to the side like that. I've got the petunia taking up a ton of space in the center, which is really good. Let me spread that out just a little bit. Okay, looks good. And then the last thing I'm going to come through is the apitinia. And I put it right here on the side 
for a little burst of color. I like the variegation as well. And like I said, this one acts more as a succulent. So this will be a little interesting having it in this design. I want to make sure that it doesn't get overly watered. Okay, and just for a little pop of color, I'm gonna tuck in a couple of pieces of slag glass. This is just stuff that you can get in Arkansas. Just a little pop of blue, I think is really pretty. All right, we're actually starting to get rain, so I'm actually gonna wrap this up really quick. Let me get this a quick wash down with the hose. Okay, so I really like the look of it. Remember I talked to you guys a lot about how I really want things to look like tucked in, like they've been there for a long time. And that's the overall goal with this container. You can see all the maidenhair fern coming up around the base. I literally plopped this right in the center of the maidenhair fern plant and it's all coming up around the side, which is really pretty. Here are the peonies popping up over here. I believe these are Carl. I don't remember, something like that. It looks like I got a lot of, um, need to deal with some weeds over here, but I actually need to come in with a big bag of mulch to come across here. My next project is planting some petunias here, so I haven't done that quite yet. But yeah, I need to add some mulch um, right there. Kleinsfeld, Carl, something or other. I'll put the um, name up below and a picture beside it. They were new to me last year, so of course they have not bloomed for me as of yet. But I really like the look of this. I think it fits really well in this area. I like the height of the salvia, I think is really nice. And we've got the salvia greggy, which as you can continue to cut that back throughout the season, it'll continue to give you color. We've got the verbena, we've got some beautiful kind of magenta purple petunias popping up and then the apertinia coming out the side with a few pieces of tucked in slag glass. I think it looks great. Terracotta ties in really well. Okay, this is what I'm gonna utilize to um, treat the aphids. I bounce around to several different things in all honesty. And this is just easy, pre-mixed, already ready to go. Um, I don't have all my stuff mixed up for already because I was not expecting aphids this early. But this is Captain Jack's Insecticidal Super Soap. I get this from uh, Home Depot, um, but it does kill aphids. So I'll just be spraying this on now. I'm not going to spray this at this exact moment because we are getting a lot of rain right now and it will just wash it all off. So after the rain stops, then I will go ahead and apply this. Okay, that was a fun, um, easy project. I know this is not a long video. I've had several long videos as of late, so I wanted to pop in a short one just so that you guys don't get bored with everything. Um, but I've got several of these pots throughout the garden that I'm gonna be working with. And if that's something of a little bit of a different approach, typically I put everything into the ground in my front and side gardens. And that's something I've always done. So now I'm trying to explore with more height and more depth by including and tucking in actual containers and then working in perennialized gardens with some pop -up annuals in those containers. I think it's going to go a long way to add to the maturity of my garden um, as I continue to grow and build this garden, but it's feeling really good so far. I'm just going to do one container at a time. I don't want to do all of them at the same time. I really want to enjoy and take my time as I go through each one making sure that I'm investing in some perennials that I'm excited about and perennials that are appropriate for whatever area that particular container is. Okay, the rain is coming quickly, quickly. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. As always, make sure you hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you know when my latest videos are up and make sure you, and make sure you check me out on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. As always, she's a mad gardener or a decorator or anything else that she wants to be. Thanks y'all.